and this video is about step one. <laughs> step one is the exam that allows you or doesn't allow you to apply to certain specialties. It's the way that people have described it to me. I don't think it's that black and white, but it does indicate in terms of averages, what scores and what specialties kind of reside with which. So for the past year, I have been studying for this exam and then I studied for a period of six weeks of dedicated like eight to 12 hours every single day of studying. And this whole video is about my experience, my journey, how I structured my schedule, how, what resources I use, what I would do differently, what I would change, what I would never change, and last but not least, my score reveal. I'm proud of myself, I'm proud of the score I caught, and I wanna make sure that people are proud of their scores and their realities, because a lot of us do get really good scores. They're not 260 plus, but they're good. So stay tuned for the end of the video where I do reveal my score. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment on Med School Mila. I know I've been really MIA on YouTube. I just, I suck. There's no other excuse for that. Their second year was crazy, but I'm hoping by this really long video, I can kind of make up to you guys what I was supposed to be doing this whole year on YouTube. Um, so make sure you subscribe. I, I do have a lot of videos that I'm gonna be recording every week um, that I'll be putting up once I learn how to edit faster and things like that. Um, they will start, you will start seeing my little freckle face a lot more, I'm telling y'all. Let's get started, shall we? <laughs> Dedicated is a period that you have just to study for step one. So I decided to cut my dedicated period back in order to uh, enjoy my life before third year. And I figured six weeks would be enough. And it sure was. Six weeks for me was enough. It is what it is, whatever you, whatever you think you can handle. I know for me, I need balance. Um, I probably would have gone into third year burnt out. I felt rejuvenated, refreshed. I had my vitamin D levels replenished. I needed that. Um, if you don't need it, don't do it, girl. Don't do it. We had a step one boot camp, and I really enjoyed it for a few reasons. Different sessions that you could go into, and it was all non-mandatory, like you didn't have to go, but I felt like it was a good way to start off my step period because right after finals, we had three finals, we had MBMEs, all these things, I was burnt out already. And then we also had one-on-one -on -one sessions with our peer tutors and things like that to help us arrange our schedules and like figure out how we're feeling and advice and tips. We got free lunch, we had snacks, we had like all these free giveaways, there's t-shirts. So it kind of felt like a little camp before we all go away and like do what we need to do. So I, I took advantage of the passive learning that the school gave me for step one boot camp because I just was not ready to jump straight from finals into step period. Um, our finals ended on a Wednesday. We had boot camp Thursday and Friday, and I actually decided to take the weekend off. Also Mother's Day that weekend, um, and so I decided to really just take time and like remember my mom who passed away, and it was I you know it was great. And then Monday started and. Bam! <laughs> Shit was really real, let me tell you. Okay, so boy, I haven't seen this baby in a while since I uh, passed my exam. So, this is what I did, and it's like $5 to get it unbound and put into a spiral notebook. Y'all, if you're clumsy like me and you need something sturdy that's gonna be there, I mean, you see it. It's gonna be with you for the whole year. This is good stuff. Now, I got little tablets and I arranged them by subject. First of all, let me make this very clear. Everything that is in first aid is fair game, meaning that you should know it. I didn't realize that like every single word in here you should know. So if you see something and you're like going through your first aid and you're like, I don't know, it doesn't seem important. It's literally important because I don't think I can emphasize it enough. Okay. Now back to the explaining. Everything about like gram positive bacteria. But what I did with my sketchy notes is after every section, I would add 
those bacteria two pages after it. So like after every section, I would add my notes and what I took earlier in the year in the book so that every single bug has its sketchy equivalent. So that I knew when I looked at my first aid, this picture was in my mind. So now I'm not really even separating them. They're actually physically together and now they're mentally together. Do you see what I'm saying? I do highly suggest that you either keep it in the same area or like a little booklet on the side. You don't have to do it exactly like this, but I thought it was helpful because I'm a very like picture memory person. And so to have it right there really solidified these concepts for microbiology um, and pharmacology as well. I did the same thing for all the drugs, um, or at least all the antibiotics, all the antiviruses, um, antiparasites, all those things. The next thing I did, I had this little booklet. And do you know how small this is? It's small for a reason, because I don't believe in rewriting everything that you get wrong. You would never be done with anything. This was my book of things I consistently kept on getting wrong, to the point that I would get so annoyed that I would create a mnemonic or some memory device or aid or something there, I would just have to look at this every single day because I could realize that this was my weaknesses. This is like my book of weaknesses. Um, and shout out to Black Web Fest. I spoke at their panel a few months ago, so it was actually perfect. Um, so let me give you an example. Um, there are different ways that we supply the brain. And this is a thing that I got from Dr. Ryan, Board and Beyond. Um, and it talks about like if you have a pica stroke or an ica stroke or a basally stroke and like what symptoms you would see. Um, and so I would look and write this down every single day so that I could remember this on test day. And guess what I did the moment I walked into my exam? This was one of the things that I wrote and it was very helpful for me. And so I had a biostats page. I actually had a few biostats pages that I would just write this out every single day. So I do encourage you to get a small little book. It took me like 15 minutes a day to write down the things I needed to write down every day and I, it greatly helped me on my exam. My next outline book was <gasps> Bethelma because this was a lifesaver. I can't emphasize this enough. You need to order it if your school doesn't give it to you. Period. I went through this book two or three days before. You can see how beat up it is two or three days before my step one exam and it was a lifesaver. That was the physical resources that I used every single day that I had in my bag attached to my hip for six weeks straight. Those were the items. Who did I study with? How is my study schedule? All those questions, very important. I was the type of person that half studied on my own, half studied with groups. It was helpful to be with friends that will keep you accountable and be like, where are we studying? Even if it's just in the same coffee shop, like as long as we're all there, um, you know, making sure that we're getting the hours in. Because as long as you put in the work, you should get the results, to be honest. So I studied with the study group most days um, and we would meet and like on Mondays was usually people in my, my study group, which was mostly three or four people max. Um, Mondays were like test day. And so you can just, you know, you gotta do your test wherever you need to do your test. Um, Tuesday, we would usually meet at school and like our mods are basically just classrooms that are empty, big tables, you know, you can't get any better than that. Wednesdays, we would do wine Wednesdays. And I'm telling you, y'all need something to keep you going. Guys. I can, uh... And then starting at 5 p.m., they served um, half bottle of wine. And so me and my friends would be like, look, every Wednesday we're sitting at Barnes & Noble and then at five o'clock we all get in a bottle of wine. And it was really nice. It was actually something to kind of look forward to every Wednesday. We're doing a cheers to our last Barnes & Noble step study session. It's step all right, we have been riding it out together. And this has been one hell of a journey. I'm so ready to get the ride. <laughs> get me off. Any last words of our last Barnes & Noble get me off the study ride. day? <laughs> we got this. We need more positivity Yes, we do. We need to be positive. I'm tired. Ah! I'm tired. 
Cheers to being tired and done. Yes. <laughs> With our half wine Wednesday. Then. then like Thursdays, we would go to Starbucks or whatever. Friday, back at school. Saturday, you, you, you know, I would usually sneak off to Brooklyn or like sneak off to any other city because I just needed some time by myself or even just stay at home. Um, and so that was kind of our schedule and it kind of kept things fresh. You weren't just like sitting in one spot. I know I saw like this one guy, he said that he sat in the same exact spot for six weeks. Like, absolutely not. I could never. For for you, good for you. For me, I need, I need variety. I need wine. I need chocolate. I need this to not be so fucking terrible. Um, because it's already terrible. I'm not going to make it worse. <laughs> good luck. Um, now let's talk about my study schedule and I'm going to put a picture and as you can kind of understand I'm a little bit more laid back I'm like I don't need a schedule to actually stress me out even more I just made sure I put how many questions I wanted to get accomplished that day which is usually 120 120 questions is about three U world blocks if I can hit that um, every day I was happy so this is a list of everything you need to study and I knew that there are certain things that I was better at and there are certain things I wasn't for example psych I could pretty much like figure out what I was doing but then there would be things like cardio like cardiovascular like that whole system girl I mean, I needed a little bit more time studying it because it was just harder for me. Morning, I would do content review. Um, I would actually start off doing a 40 question randomized set, meaning every single question that could ever be thrown at me, I would do it. And then I would review those questions. So it would take me about two hours to do a 40 question set and then review it. I would actually do that at home um, because I just, I don't know, I just wanted to do it at home. I didn't want to be at school fucking like 80 years. I would be at school by 11, so. 11, 11.30. These subjects, let's say it's a cardio day, I would do a content review, and what that means is I would go through first aid, and then I would go through first aid in detail. And if there is something that I felt like I just didn't really fully understand or grasp, that's when I would go back to either Pathoma or Boards and Beyond. First aid, if I couldn't explain it to my friend, then I needed to make sure I understood that concept. And so I would do that from like 11-ish to maybe 3 p.m. So it's like a good like three hour, four hour block to do that studying. Then I would do a 40 question targeted set on cardiology. Let's say that's a cardiology day. I would do a 40 question set for cardiology. By the time I did that, it was like 6 p.m. I'm getting hungry. I would either order with my friends to go eat or like I brought my own dinner. Um, during dinner, I was still studying, to be honest, um, 7 to like 11 p.m. I would do another question set, another review, and then final touches. So that's kind of how I scheduled my day, so that every single day I covered something, and I was at least doing 80 questions mixed, 40 questions targeted, and then if there was something else I needed to do, like sketchy or something, then I would like make sure to put that in there. And, um, and I felt like it was, it was doable. Yes, it was tough. Yes, 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 all those things. Um, but, you know, we gotta do what you gotta do. Saturdays um, mornings, I would take off and I would usually just like go to like get breakfast, go work out, like do hot yoga, and then Sunday mornings I also took off. I never took off a full day during my period, my set period. I took off half days, like Saturdays and Sundays were my half days, um, but I never took off like a full day. What did I take? I took two MBMEs, the free 120, and then two U-roll tests. Did every week, it was around week three or week four that I decided to do and try to simulate the real exam because the real exam is seven blocks with one 45 minute break. Free 120 in the morning, then take like a little lunch break and then did the MBME exam after. I think I need to practice just sitting there and doing the work. Um, I recommend it. Some people don't. Some people don't think it's necessary because he has so much adrenaline on game day that you really don't need to practice it, which is true. I did notice that on exam day, I had so much energy. I did not need to drink coffee. I had like half of a Red Bull and I was on it. So I do agree that your adrenaline rush 
can get you through and you have enough energy, but I needed to do it for myself. Um, but it's important that you practice the MBMEs. They are super resourceful. Although sometimes they are shot, they shoot you in your heart. You feel like you're a failure. Um, you know, it's terrible sometimes, but no matter what, I do highly suggest the MBME exams because they are the ones that write the test, first of all. And they do pretty much, I would say that my actual test experience was like a mix between the Euro kind of feeling and the MBME feeling. For MBMEs, you do have to pay for each one. And I was so broke, y'all, during step. I was so broke because my submit check from school hadn't come in yet. And so I was like, do I eat or do I take a Euro exam? That was how real it got sometimes. And I would have to be like, girl, I'm gonna have to eat ramen noodles tonight so I can take this test. And just realize you have to pull out some coins, but no matter what, it's your future, it's your education. Do it, do whatever you have to do. My first MB and me, I believe I got a 203. And that was terrible. That was like a really like, okay, I passed, but what the hell am I gonna do with the 203? I have six things in mind. I'm interested in emergency medicine, psychiatry, internal medicine, family medicine, ob guide, and psych. So those are, did I say psych already? Whatever, those are the things that I'm mostly interested in. And I looked at the averages for those professions to see what did most people have um, while they were applying for these residency programs and were accepted. And so I looked and the average for me or the minimum score I would really want to get to be competitive would be a 230. So that was my, that was my goal. Um, and I'll show you that graph so that you can see. It's really important that you figure out what you want to do. I feel like in med school, for some reason, we feel like we need to get like 99th percentile. And it's just not really true. Yes, shoot for the stars, be great, go be great in your lab and your life. Look at those averages. Now, if you want to be a, a neurosurgeon, then you gotta get the neurosurgeon average. It's first of all for you to decide in what type of life you wanna live, figure that out, and then from there, set that as your minimum. My minimum was a 230, and then what would make me super happy and what I was reaching for, the stars, as I would say, was a 240. Um, so those are my goals, and I didn't feel like it was too out of reach, but when I got that 203, I was like, how am I going to raise my score 30 points? That's wild, but guess what? Your girl did raise her score 30 points, and I'm telling you it's possible. Kind of like, kind of slowly crept up from there. There was one test, I think it was MBME form, I have to remember exactly what form it was, but form 19, I think. Woo, just, just realize it will humble you. I think I had scored a 240, and then the next MBME, that MBME 19, I like went back to a 220 terrified like oh my god i'm never gonna be a doctor <laughs> that's all i wanted to talk about in terms of details okay now the moment not the moment the moment before the moment two days before step i drove up to the testing center because it was like a little bit farther away from where i usually go and i looked around i looked at parking the moment i walked in the building i started my heart started racing i was shaking and i was like oh god it's already happening and so i did some breathing exercises in the bathroom and just like walked around, got accustomed to the place. Then like on my way home, I started crying. <laughs> I was crying my eyes out. I was like, I'm not ready, oh my God. I was like crying tears of happiness and then like scared tears. It was a really scary moment. And it was like, I was playing gospel music and I was like, this is so dramatic, but I needed to get a good cry out. I don't think I actually cried except the day before the exam I cried and it was just like okay it's happening like I'm supposed to study the night before the day before my exam but I ended up doing it because it's just what the hell else am I supposed to do with my day I was too broke to go get a massage I was too broke to do anything but I did get some money to go to Barnes and Noble to get some pancakes because they have these amazing pancakes at Barnes and Noble and so I got some pancakes some eggs some coffee and I ended up just like lightly studying, meaning watching Pathoma. I watched the first three chapters of Pathoma, which is a lot, but it actually, I felt like it was like a good basic overview of pathology, which I really appreciated. Boyfriend was visiting me, and so I picked him up, 
We, from the train station, I picked him up, we went to my park. Shout out to my boyfriend for dealing with my attitude and it was really bad the last day and I was just really sad and anxious and the last day I was kind of flipping through my book, of my, my brown book, y'all know my book, um, and I was like, I think I need like a confidence check. I decided to watch the Beyonce documentary and it was everything I needed, let me tell you. I highly suggest that you watch like your favorite movie or like your favorite dance videos or whatever it is that gets you hype. You actually need to pour back into yourself and I slay. I was like, I was like, and all day, all day, and I was dancing, and I completely forgot that in like six hours, I was going to take the biggest exam of my life because Beyonce was pouring into me, and by the time the, the documentary was over, I was like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm ready. Sasha Fierce is here. I went to sleep really good that night, I think because I danced it all out, and then 6 a.m. I was up, reviewed my little book one more time. And I was out the door and I had such a good attitude walking in. I was excited. I was ready to get it over with. I was a little nervous, but I was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Like I'm ready. It's time. Like it's time. I've been preparing for this for two years now. There's nothing that can stop me. Like nothing at all. Um, I was so hyped up during the exam. I don't know why. Like you can tell I'm probably just an energetic person in general, but I was so hyped up. I actually was like, I don't need a break. Let's go, let's go. Like in the middle of the exam, I was like, I got it, next. Then like after two sections, I would take a little break in the bathroom. I would shake it off, I'd drink some water, I'd drink a little sip of Red Bull, just to give me a little bit more edge. Go back in there, two more sections. Last two sections, I was feeling good. And then I took 10 minute break and then I took the last section and I was done. I was done guys. I, I walked out of there and I was like, huh. I did that shit. I did that shit. Hey. And after reflecting on it, I was like, ooh, wait, what was that question? What the hell are they asking? And it was kind of haunting me in my dreams. And I would wake up and be like, really, Camila, you got that question wrong? <laughs> no, you knew that. You knew that. But for the most part, I felt, I didn't feel defeated. I will have to say that. I did not feel defeated. I felt like how I felt walking out of a U World test. So, all in all, it was an incredible experience. I would never want to do that again, even though I know I have to do it again for step two and step three, but that's a little bit different. It's only six weeks. You can get through it. You can do it. Um, it's doable. Every med student, almost almost all of us go through it. Um, and if there's any extenuating circumstances, you can always talk to your administration to figure out if you really don't feel like you're ready, if you're scoring at a goal that you don't think is doable for you and what you want to do, then extend your test, whatever you need to do. Um, I'm sure that your school could hopefully be encouraging of you and finding alternatives because this test, once you take it, you cannot retake it if you pass. That's just, if you are not scoring in your range, do not walk into that testing center. Nothing is going to change. I'm like dead ass. Um, so now, should I reveal my score? Hmm. Um, so guys, the time has finally come. <laughs> you guys, um, how do I, do I like just say it out loud or like, what do I? I was walking into the clinic when I got an email saying that my score was ready and I was like, oh my God. And I figured out how to take pop-up blocker off my phone. There it was. And my score was a 232. Hey, hey, Shipley. Hey, hey, Shipley. Hey, hey, I got it above my goal. I got it above my, oh my God, I just spilled water everywhere. Cheers, Camila did it. Camila's a bad bitch. Camila set goals and killed them goals. I had a 232 like I said, and I first got it, and I was like, hey, I did it. And my last two tests were actually scheduled, or not scheduled, but I was scoring above a 240. So I was really excited and I was very hopeful 
for a 240. I told myself, if I was gonna get above a 230, I have no right to moan and groan and oh, I didn't get a 240. Yes, that was my ultimate goal. Yes, I was shooting for the scar stars. Yes, I was predicted to get a 240-ish, like 238 to 242, but things happen on the exam. I actually felt, like I said, I felt fine, but um, that test was hard as shit. There were things that I knew that I did not know um, and that I was like, this is gonna screw me over, but overall I felt okay. So like, it is what it is, you know? And we all did that. And anyone that feels like they cannot talk about their average score, um, you know, that's unfortunate because it is medical culture. I don't blame anybody. It actually is a little bit uncomfortable for me to talk about it on here because honestly, I can. I even did a little quick search to see like, is anybody talking about a 230 score? No. Um, because for some reason we don't talk about like what most of us get in medicine which is like if you look at the bars like that's what we all get I don't get it um, I'm gonna be as honest as possible about my journey I'm trying to be vulnerable with you guys and show that if you stick to a goal and this is what you want to actually do in medicine you can do it um, I'm very happy for myself I'm very like proud of myself and that's no cap no oh she's so full of herself no I fucking work my ass off for that and I can say that I'm very proud of of my the thing was that I got like one of the lower scores in my friend group um, my other friends got like 240 pluses someone even got like a 250 people around me are flourishing and I was just so proud of us then for like a second I was like oh I'm like the dumbest one in the group I don't know why us med students do that like we have impossible standards that just don't matter as long as I know what I want to do with my life and I got to my own personal goals who gives a fuck what my friend try not to compare yourself it does it serves no purpose except bring jealousy and competition that doesn't need to be there because like I said this test is more about in competition with yourself than anything else overall I'm really proud of myself Overall, I want to thank all the prayers. I don't think I would have gotten through it without prayers from family members and check-ins and FaceTimes with my friends and um, my boyfriend and my brother and my grandma and my dad. I would text him and be like, I can't do this. Like all those things, just being very vulnerable and honest about how I felt during the journey. and. I would say on a daily basis, my study group. I cannot say that enough. My study group got me through a lot. Wine Wednesdays, you have no idea. You have no idea. Like that shit was really important. I think I'm done. Please make sure you like and comment and subscribe to my channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe because I'm gonna have more coming about my third year and study habits and all these different things I've been wanting to record. I already have a whole list. Make sure you follow Med School Mila on Instagram, Med School Mila, uh, my website, medschoolmila.com, where I still write posts because I still love to write. Um, and keep in tune with me, subscribe to my email list. And yeah, thanks for listening. Let me know what you think. Talk to y'all later.